Now, Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. My dear friends, uh, there is uh, plenty of confusing theories in our time. Uh, one of these theories is the uh, Siri theory, the hidden Pope theory. Now, it got Father Nariai, you know, uh, was a priest, friend of ours in Japan, you know, and Father Nariai um, passed away, God uh, rest his soul and bless it. But he got caught by, uh, by those crooks, Father Van Tran. He flew to Texas, you know, and he donated to Father Van Tran Ponzi schemes and, uh, and pies in the skies, looking for a hidden Pope whose name is not revealed unless you make a donation in Texas. Salvation doesn't come from Texas. Some all good Western movies come from Texas, but not salvation. So, what is this theory, theory, this new, the, uh, this confusion that uh, the devil is trying to add? You know? and not that there is any theory uh, disciples here in Cebu. You know? It's elsewhere uh, that uh, some disciples may be made, but not in the Philippines. It's about Cardinal Siri, who was a protege of Pope uh, Pius XII. And when the conclave of 1958 and the conclave of 1978, if I'm not mistaken, happened, there was a white smoke and then a black, black smoke. Normally, it's black smoke first, telling you they are still voting and they have not elected anyone. And then it's the white smoke saying, Abemus Papam, we have a pope. And so there was two conclaves and the, they say, it's, and it may be true that Siri was elected. And he was the little protégé of Pius XII. So he was a Xerox copy of Pope Pius XII, who had groomed him, you know, and prepared his friend cardinals to vote for him after his death. So the Catholic Church would protect itself by having a majority of Italian cardinals. And very often, the darling of the previous pope would be the one elected next, very often. And... That would ensure a certain continuity in the church. And so Pius XII thought that this plan would work, but it did not. Because Siri, in the best of cases, is a coward. While being proposed uh, the uh, papacy to save the church, to prevent Vatican II, to prevent the greatest catastrophe in our uh, history over 2,000 years now, we are pretty sure now, worse than Luther, worse than Arius, who swept the church as well. He, uh, he, he followed his fears and he, um, he, he caved in into the blackmail, like Benedict XVI, you may say, whose uh, reason makes no sense because now we are entering 2012, so it's going to be about 10 years where he survived uh, the time when he said, my health is breaking down. Well, if you leave 10 years later, it means you were actually lying. Your health was good. Mm. Uh, so we, we would, he would have reigned, Benedict XVI would have reigned uh, more than 15 years. But the cowardice took the best of Siri, at least. Uh, in Ratzinger, there are other motivations. He's, he's also a true heretic. But uh, in, in case of Cardinal Siri, all I can say is that cowardice took the better of him. Not only did this, but in the, during the council, he didn't do much. And then after the council, when one bishop only raised his voice, uh, Archdiocese Lefebvre, he attacked him. He condemned him. And he was eased out by Paul VI, because he's conservative, you know. Conservatives, they uh, are used only for a while by uh, the revolution, and after that they are put away. So he was put away in, uh, in a big arch archdiocese, that of Genoa, in North Italy. And there he was a novice ordo bishop. So according to the Siri theory, a novice ordo a cowardly, conservative novice ordo bishop who says the new mass is the one who is supposed to save the church in secret by being a secret pope of whom you, you are not supposed to know the name. That's how far it goes. And not only he attacked Archelefe, but he founded a seminary 
to rival uh, the seminary of Econ, to drain the vocations away from Econ. See, so Econ was just started and Arjo Lefebvre was doing the right thing. The priests that were, were coming out were, were good. They were good, uh, zealous, traditional priests. And so with a Siri, like with the Opus Dei in Spain, the, those who thought that there was something wrong, uh, those who smelt that there was a crisis in the church, were diverted uh, away from uh, the full position of Arjou Lefebvre. And, and then uh, later on, year after year, they were slowly eaten, uh, slowly digested, slowly re recycled into Novus Ordo priests. And this is what Cardinal Siri did. And then uh, later, his, the seminary moved in France, became the Institut Saint-Martin, which is still around, with many seminarians. And when, when Francis says, uh, I don't want the Latin Mass anymore, I abolish it, I forbid it, or if I allow it, it's less and less, in the uh, Traditionis Custodes, they say, oh yes, Holy Father, uh, we are not going to say the Mass of Saint Isaac the anymore, we will only say the Nouveau Sordo Mass. This, right away, they say, we comply, no new Mass, no problem. And that is the Siri mentality. They were groomed into that false obedience and uh, that refusal to fight for the truth by, um, by Cardinal Siri. So Siri, when he was active, did nothing, fought against those who upheld the truth and uh, uh, made a decoy against the Cone, fought against the the only uh, traditional seminary that uh, remained in those times, in the 70s. I'm talking about the early 70s. So uh, how, how is it possible that uh, after he retires, then he reclaims the papacy without saying nothing in public? While the Pope is a public person, the problem is that Francis is running the show publicly. That makes him the Pope because the church is a public society. Whoever runs the, the, the show there, even though he's a murderer and a very, uh, very bad and even a heretic in the case of Francis, he's still the Pope. You know? Like Caiaphas. But there, uh, we don't even know that he, he even believed in the Siri theory himself. You know, It doesn't seem so from the little declarations that we have left of him. So the Siri theory is really uh, preposterous and ridiculous, has hardly any followers but only uh, is a nuisance that causes troubles once in a while. Once in a while, I see it pop up, you know, like a, like a condiment, you know, like, a, like some soy sauce, you know, like a, a dark stain of soy sauce once in a while. But, but that's, 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 uh, the, but the behavior of the Cardinal Siri uh, explains us the mess in which we are now, the, the gravity of the situation now, because the, those thousands of bishops and, and hundreds of thousands of priests who knew better elected to keep silence. Their silence is the greatest cause of the damnation of souls. That's why we are in a situation comparable with the end of times that we are reading about in the Gospel of today. The Gospel of today, Matthew 25, is about the end of times. Or 24, I don't remember. Uh, so uh, we are in, in this situation because uh, the, the, the main office of a priest is to preach. The main act of jurisdiction is to tell the truth because only the truth can save us. And when it was time to tell the truth, they remained silent, just like by opposition. You know, the group here is growing. I see new faces all over the place. Welcome here. You know, welcome on board. You know. All of you uh, coming with a skirt next time, but uh, it's it's really warm my heart because I see that you are using your character of confirmation or uh, by supplied uh, Holy Ghost because we don't have bishops around anymore. You are anticipating your character of confirmation by telling the truth, and this is what saves the church. We will continue, and that's why it's not the end of the world yet. You know. Because you are doing the right thing, like those uh, ex-charismatics in uh, South Cebu. Uh, it's miracles of conversions uh, also there. And also in Camutes. In Camutes, 
there is a village leader or two leaders actually, and they constantly go to the other village and then they distribute the leaflets of Father June Mark and now the missal in Visaya, and they tell them, uh, tradition is there, you know, and then uh, we will take care of your souls, and no corruption there, and free marriages, you know. Um, people are bewildered. I don't have to pay one month's salary to get married. I don't have to pay for baptism anymore. The Novus Sordo is furious. So after a while, the Novus Sordo lowers the price of baptism, or make it free, and it's, they are in panic. Why? Because they are telling the truth. The truth is finding its way and it spills because uh, uh, leaders, true leaders, as you are, uh, um, uh, as they are among you and among them, in south and north and west, true leaders find other new leaders who will uh, not be afraid to tell the truth. So it's, uh, it's a wonderful uh, reconquista of the truth. And that's why I don't think, despite whatever our Lord says, you know, I, I don't think it's the end of the world. Bishop Williamson says it's a dress rehearsal of the end of the world. So uh, they, you, they come with the dress of the end of the world. You know, they are trying the implant on the, on the hand, you know, or there is the COVID thing, you know, but the, uh, uh, in the end, the vaccine mandate is lifted because of the so many people yelling and screaming and complaining because of the injuries of the vaccine and so forth, like in Japan and in Great Britain. So, uh, but it sounds like a trial run of the end of the world, definitely. And there is a smell of the great apostasy. Uh, there is definitely a apostasy around us. Our time is very dark. But how beautiful! And all the more beautiful is the confession of the truth by so many of you. And like St. Paul in the epistle, I can only congratulate you. You know, the, 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 this uh, epistle of the Colossians, St. Paul just uh, lashes congratulations and piles them up, you know, uh, on the Colossians. You know. Even when he uh, rebukes the Corinthians, he always has the heart to, to console and to encourage and I would like to finish this liturgical year because it's, this is the end of the year. The beginning is next Sunday, Advent. I would, like to, I would like to finish you on this note. Thank you very much for your testimony for the truth. It's the greatest of gifts. And uh, it really uh, puts my, uh, my priesthood, the priesthood of Father June Mark and of the other priests, really into its fulfillment. To see that uh, many people now have a good chance of being saved as the movement grows with the spreading of the truth. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.